All right. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Present yourself. Hey, my name is Dirk Verburen, and uh, yeah, I, I play in a band with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here still in Nashville, uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Actually, not Nashville, Franklin, Tennessee, doing pre-production. Yes. And I did an interview with uh, David Ellison, uh, maybe what ten days ago or something. And now it's time for Dirk. I'm yeah. I'm being roasted now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, a lot of things to talk about, mm -hmm. and um, about drums, but I want to talk about life. About life. About life, because Dirk is he's always happy. Always happy. He's all, yeah, it's this. No matter what. Okay. Uh, and uh, so when the you know when you're touring, it's yeah. not easy. People think mm. it's it is fun. It's great, but it's tough as well, right? It so, is tough. Uh, yes. Traveling a lot, uh, tour buses and uh, airplanes and airports yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, waking up. 5, 5 a.m. to yeah. you know to go to the airport, whatever. Yep. And Dirk is always like this, <laughs> uh, smiling yeah. and uh, happy. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to see in a, on tour to see how people react differently to the stress, yeah. Uh, yeah. to the uh, you know life mm -hmm. pains in general. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, so after a while, you know all those those moments, you said that you decided to be like that. And I was impressed, impressed with that mm. because it's like, can you decide, okay, one day you're gonna be happy now. I'm gonna be a smiley person. And I thought, uh, I think this is so cool. And then I, that's my question. Okay. And then <laughs> uh, to explain to everybody, because I think most of us, everybody, you know, we, you know, we have our moments, our suffering moments. And then mm -hmm. life is not always, uh, um, you know, uh, perfect. No. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. You know, it's 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 kind of, um, you know, I'm not a I'm not a religious person, even though I grew up with, with uh, Catholic. My parents were practicing Catholics and stuff. But then at some point, when I was maybe 12 or 13, it kind of faded away, and I wasn't. It wasn't really for me that much, you know, to follow through. But I think. What you mentioned about how you approach life and choosing to be happy for me, it's kind of a maybe a philosophy, you could call it, you know, which to me, like, that's kind of how I see religion is at the base of it. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a philosophy of how you approach life, you know, so I'm not going to say this is my religion, but, you know, it's kind of like if you understand that, you know, things will happen to you. So it's not about trying to avoid things to happen, like, let's say, you know, uh, uh, a crappy morning or you know a shitty show or in our case you know we could have like a bad show on stage where the sound isn't good or there's technical issues or the guitar sound is you know you're having pro whatever you know the stuff will happen no matter you know if you're at the top of the everything you're still gonna have problems so it's about how you react mm -hmm. it's about how you decide to take these things and deal with them and that's when, you know, at some point when I was thinking about that and reading and talking with people about that, I decided that. So it's really completely up to me. You know, mm -hmm. you can say like, oh, yeah, I'm upset because this person said this or because that happened. You can, you know, and sometimes we do and sometimes I do and we all do. So this is normal. It's not about that never happens. You know, it will. It will. But it's about most of the time when you can, you try to be, you know, in control of your reactions and. Not necessarily in control. You make the choice, you make the cautious decision to be like, I'm not going to let this ruin my time. I'm not going to let this ruin my day. Because every problem usually has a solution, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the solution is right there. Sometimes it happens later. Um, but so it's about patience. It's about just having an awareness, you know. And for me, I used to be when I was younger, I used to not be like this at all. Yeah, right. Which is yeah, why you told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've come to this place. So because were you like always complaining about, you know? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that I was, uh, you know, I wasn't like, uh, you know, I was always kind of had a happy side. But there was also a part of me where I could wake up in the morning with a crappy mood and then my whole day was ruined from there, you know. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I couldn't control it. And I was just, it's a cycle. Like you get more angry because you're angry. <laughs> and then you feel worse because you feel bad you know so it's like and then yeah. the whole day is like ruined and then you know at some point i think maybe it happens when you grow when you get older a little bit mm -hmm. and you realize that you know 
when you're 20, you don't think about death or life is going to come to an end. You believe that like we all do, you know, oh, you don't even think. Yeah, yeah. You just like do, do, do. And life is great. And you just assume. And then at some point you start realizing that, hey, this is going to end one day. You know, you see maybe like in my case, I had my mom pass away a few years ago and she was sick a few years before that. And so going through that whole process really made me realize um, that life is finite. You know? like, like what? Tell me, tell me about it. Uh, well, so my mom had been sick a few times before in her life and she always made it through. So, uh, so I was always kind of like, cool. But then when this, this last time, you know, we were kind of told from the beginning, this is very unlikely going to end well because it's, it's pretty uncurable and we're going to try, but, you know, prepare to, you know, I spoke with my dad and, uh, he kind of, you know, my mom, I don't know how much she was in the know of this, but the doctors kind of told my dad. And so he told me, like, be prepared. You know, this mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. going to end bad. And it, unfortunately, it did. So but that whole process of going through and seeing how my mom was dealing with being sick and progressively getting weaker and not being able to do basic things like putting a hairband. Mm -hmm. I remember she was really upset one day because she couldn't do this. Like something you and I, everybody takes for granted, like do this. She yeah, couldn't yeah. do it. Like she didn't have the strength to like put mm -hmm. the hairband. Mm -hmm. So that's really hard, you know, and you've lived your whole life. And then all of a sudden you have to give these little things up. But she always stayed very optimistic. Of course, she had bad days. She had you know, bad moments. Was it the turning point as you decided to be happy? Was it was? Yeah. During this period? Yeah. All that, you know, the, seeing this, I decided at one point I want to be like my mom. I want to mm -hmm. be she's dealing with the worst you could deal with, which is getting sick and eventually passing away and she's still happy smiling mm -hmm. you know and she, and and she always said to me you know this was one thing she told me was you always keep learning throughout your life right it's yeah. it's never finished like no matter if you're you know 20 or 60 you always keep learning new things and and that for me was the biggest lesson from her mm -hmm. so through her turmoil and and you know her her disease and stuff like that i realized that like this for me is a, is going to be a changing moment and i'm not going to allow my days to be wasted yeah being a and not grumpy just, yeah exactly and not just for me but for the people around me because that's the other thing about it is yeah, you realize maybe, yeah 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 you know you always much, have a family around you or like yeah. a bandmate or you know and everybody gets affected by negativity mm -hmm. even if it's not spoken if you're just walking around like and people see that you're not happy. That face is only for the photo session. Yeah, session, right? <laughs> exactly. Photo session. The, the metal face. Yeah. <laughs> the metal face. <laughs> exactly. But it's it, so in that sense, it's a choice. And, and, and people could say, you know, oh, what are you saying? You're the drummer in Megadeth. You have a great life. You do what you love. Sure. But I have my troubles, too. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody, my life is not perfect. Like you said, you mm -hmm. know, we all have things to deal with. And and some people have more favorable conditions than others. I believe you also build that through your life, you know, and, and certain things you can influence. But in the end, it's really about what you decide to do and how you decide to mm -hmm. take things on. You know. And talking about music, mm -hmm. I remember you, you said that 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 way of thinking helps you a lot to perform well. Right. Because yes, any you don't you don't complain about if something's not working in, in a, uh, perfectly right like a. Yeah. Drums are not sounding great, or you, yeah. you, or you, even you just play, you do a mistake or something. Yeah, that's the biggest thing right there. Yeah, for mainly me, live, right? Yeah, yeah, because because you know you said how oh on tour I'm always happy. I used to hate touring when I first started touring. It was like I did not enjoy a second of it. Like traveling, being with people in a van, like playing live for every, everything. When I was 20, I was like, this is the worst. Playing you know? playing in front of yeah, people. Yeah. Oh my god, it was the, I was so shy, so really stressed on stage and just not enjoying any of it. You know, I, I'm, by nature I'm not the most. I didn't grow up that social, you know, a little bit kind of in my corner. And so for, it wasn't for me. And then I realized, well, I'm a musician. I have no choice. I'm going to have to do this if I uh -huh. want to be a yeah, musician. Yeah. So then I learned to appreciate it. But, but the biggest thing was about playing mistakes because that mm -hmm. used to be yeah. for me, like I would go on stage and let's say the first song I play a mistake, the whole show was ruined yeah, for, yeah, in my head. Yeah. You know, like, for me too. Yeah. Yeah. So, Any little mistakes, then the next mistake is going to be <laughs> exactly <laughs> worse yeah, and yeah. worse and worse. That's it. And then you have to understand that mistakes will happen again and that's yeah. okay hey kiko it's okay you yeah know? <laughs> so, talking to yourself yeah. while playing and while yeah. yeah and other people really helped me understand that because i would do a show and i would play and i would be like this was not a good show and then somebody would come to me and be like that's the best drumming i've ever seen yeah right yeah, yeah. and then i would be like wait a minute <laughs> i'm here yeah. in this part. like how does this work 
And then I realized that, you know, a lot of the times people don't get the same perception. We're in our instruments, so we mm -hmm. really hear every detail. I've made mistakes where I don't think even anybody in the band that I was playing with noticed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then you start realizing, okay, you know, you can minimize this. It's not as important as you yeah. think. And then the other part that I think is really important is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain. So if you go on stage, like in our case, but this could, you know, be for any job. You go in, you do the best you can. That mm -hmm. should be the mindset. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes their best is going to be perfect, right? You have the perfect day, great sound, like, you know, oh, I played yeah. perfect, you know, <laughs> today, just every note, every the groove, everything yeah. was great, right? Crowd was excited, you know. So other days, it's not going to be. Mm -hmm. But if you still go in with the mindset that I did everything I could, I never let this, this thing get in me where I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, like, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Damn, like, you know, I, I made a mistake and now I'm, oh, you know, and then, like you said, it's a yeah. cycle. If you don't let, allow that to happen, then you can really walk away from the job you did and say, I gave it everything I had. Mm -hmm. And then you can be proud of yourself mm -hmm. because no matter what you do, no matter how amazing you are and even the most, I'm sure even the most amazing talents in the world, you're going to have a bad day, you know. Oh, yeah. And so it's about understanding that. And, and again, it applies to life in general, too. You know, that, what mm -hmm. I talked about earlier. Yeah, exactly. So there's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. How are you going to deal with it? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you realize that. And you really, you know, it took me some time. It wasn't like, oh, I realized mm -hmm. it and now I'm walking yeah, around easy, with a yeah. smile every day. No, of course. So it's something that you have to be aware of yes. all the time, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. totally. And then it's a kind of a, you have to exercise yourself, right? Yes, yeah. Um, and then when, when it doesn't happen, like even here, you know, I think in the, when we were doing the pre-production, I had one or two days where I wasn't really feeling good. And then, you know, you take these days to try and understand why. Mm -hmm. what happened what did i do can i change this you know how can i approach this so it's always a continuous learning process it's never like oh don't ever feel bad like if you feel bad you're wrong not at all of course you're going to feel bad it's normal you're going to have human emotions so, yeah so then if you feel bad try to understand why yes right yeah so a lot of it is about because here's the thing you know and, and i i sincerely believe this um when when people do something negative like, for example, it could be I could yell at you or I could get angry at my dog because he's barking, you know, mm -hmm. or anything, anything that's like that kind of energy. A lot of times it's because I'm not dealing with something. It's not because you did whatever you did that made me yell at you or because my dog was barking or whatever, you know, or because somebody cut me off in traffic. It's more because I'm not. You know, there's something in me that I haven't dealt with properly or some kind of negative feeling that I haven't addressed, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and then that anger translates into you project it, right? You bring it out onto others. And so it's a lot about thinking. It's a lot about finding an inner peace, you know, and, and kind of the best way to say it is kind of like, you know, take riff, take time to reflect every day, even if it's just a few minutes, reflect like, what am I feeling People don't do this. You know, we yeah, have yeah, such yeah. a busy life, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm in the process of learning to do this. I forget sometimes, but, but I try to have a minute where I'm like, how am I feeling today? Mm -hmm. Is there anything bad here? You know, what, what do I need to talk to somebody? Maybe I need to call my wife or, and talk about something or my friend or whatever, you know, and mm -hmm. then just kind of process through it in a positive way rather than like keep it in. Then it builds up and then, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then you make death metal. So do you have any tools or habits, like you just said, every every day stop and think or mm -hmm. specific question or you know or habits yeah i you know for me I, I try to to have it's not a meditative moment but i try to find some place where i can access my my mind you know because when we're working which is nowadays you know everybody's always working 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 doing stuff got to do this got to do that so you need to make some space so for me a lot of times it's when i do my stretching and my workouts that's the time when I kind of have free time to be in my mind and kind of feel like, how am I feeling today? Am I tired? Am I happy? Am I upset? Is uh -huh. something bothering me? So it's about finding that, that, that time. Moment. Yeah, yeah, great. Everybody's always like scrolling and doing yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, the, mind, yeah, exactly. the mind is not, never at rest, right? Which is a bad thing, you know? Mm -hmm. We have a comfortable life nowadays, very, you know, in, yeah. in general, everybody yeah. Yeah. Uh, have a comfortable life compared to 100 200 years ago yeah for sure yeah. but now we have all those distractions. triggers uh, distractions and stuff that makes you 
yeah. angry or uh, unsatisfied, mm-hmm. right? So it's a, I think it's a, it's a big problem for everyone nowadays. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about creativity as well, because yes. there's a big role on that. Uh, feeling creative is the best way to be happy. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been talking about this yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the more creative you are or express yourself, you know, you yeah. don't need to be doing great stuff. Just no. express yourself, ex- express yourself, yeah. uh, any, yeah. any, in, well, we are actually, you're a great guitar player, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that means a lot coming from you. Thanks. <laughs> like, do, yeah. Doing crazy stuff, but yeah. uh, you're playing guitar and, uh, and drums, of course. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, you are always like drawing some cool sh- stuff as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, doodling, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's something that, that I was fortunate that it was always encouraged uh, from when I was a kid, you know. Uh, my parents always encouraged me. And then now my wife, like actually I started really picking up guitar again because my wife Hannah said, be creative, make your own music. Mm-hmm. And my first reaction, this was kind of before I really had this mindset that I just explained earlier, you know. I was like, I can't do that. I'm not good. You know, I'm not a real guitar player. I play drums. What am I going to do with guitar? You know? So then she kept like every week, like, I think you should make your own music. You can do yeah, it. Yeah. So then eventually I was like, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know? And then now it's like become this thing you know, that, yeah, that yeah. I really do. And, and I enjoy it. And like you said, it's the best way to feel happy is creativity because it's really a place where you can be yourself. You can express yourself. There's no rules, yeah. no boundaries. You decide. Yeah. And that's like freedom right there. Freedom defined for me is creativity. Right. So by the way, we're here during the day working on the Megadeth songs, and then uh, Dirk is upstairs, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like some more two, <laughs> two a.m., three a.m. You just hear like <laughs> 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 you can hear like yeah. he's playing guitar, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah. the noises, the headphones, and, mm-hmm. and doing some. Uh, what what kind of music you know? By the way, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, the blast beats. Well, yeah, a lot of you know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a you know. I grew up with like grindcore and death metal and all that stuff. So I have my grindcore project, uh, Ben C, and and I just you know I've been writing a lot of music with that. I work with some some cool people, and I just really enjoy you know the the creative process, you know. And so it's not so much about building a career. It's it's kind of extreme music. It's never going to be like yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's, you feel like it's for you. It's for me, yeah. It's for for me and to do some, yeah, (laughs) for my sanity and to do something with other musicians in that field that I really appreciate and it makes me happy, you know. Like Mm -hmm. the other Mm -hmm. day, like uh, uh, I got a track back with some vocals on it from uh, Kevin Sharp from Brutal Truth, who's like a guy I grew up listening to, and it was like the best feeling. I listened to it like five times. Oh my god, this is cool. So (laughs) and it's also and I write the lyrics, so it's also a way to kind of you know some of the stuff that I need to filter out of my mind, put it on paper again. A great, a great thing, you know, people have, you're going to have some negativity in you and you can get it out again by like fighting or you or can get it out. Or, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you can, exactly the- that or, <laughs> or writing, you can, you can use it. So I use it. Like when I get really pissed about something, like let's say I see some video online about, you know, animals being mistreated or whatever, which I, I follow a lot of that stuff. And sometimes, you know, some days I get really, mm-hmm. damn, you know, and then I just write about it. What are my thoughts, you know? And then I try to make a lyric that's going to encourage people to take a look and maybe maybe consider, you know, what they can do to help or what in their life. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, By the way, you're saying about this uh, blast beat, this style of music that you love. Talk, mm-hmm. Tell me about your the radio show. The Yeah. The, you, you just started, right? Just you started, just, yeah. Just yeah the, the second episode is, uh, is, is coming this week or next week. But um, yeah, I just started with Gimme Radio. Uh, the show is called Dirk's Extreme Blast. <laughs> and so I play a lot of the stuff that I like, you know, uh, old stuff, classic stuff that I grew up listening to. Like and, what? And new stuff. Like, well, like the, so, so for me, you know, of course, I, I, uh, my first touchstone with, with uh, metal was, you know, real like heavy metal was probably like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, you know, the big four, all the thrash stuff. But then I quickly, you know, evolved from there into like suicidal and then from there went into like death metal and grindcore. A lot of the stuff that was coming out late 80s, mid to late 80s, early 90s. That was when I was a teenager in school, angry, not happy. Yeah. So then this was the was perfect, the perfect thing. Right. And, yeah. and so the whole earache roster 
everything that came out on the earache label from from the uk you know they had like terrorizer morbid angel napalm death and tomb like they had all the great bands so it's kind of morbid angel is kind of your your meditation music kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah in a way you yeah. told me that <laughs> yeah when i'm relaxing and i just put some morbid angel. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no for me it's it's crazy and, and this is something that i still don't quite understand but for me i don't understand at all yeah you know, the guy's super peaceful yeah, yeah. always smiling yeah. and then puts those, those dark but, but i know sounds. Other, yeah i know other people where it's the same you know yeah. you put on some really dark sometimes aggressive, slow, sometimes yeah. aggressive stuff and it's complete peace so i think it's again it's a way to like take these feelings and give them a, a spot you know got it yeah yeah well, you know, we'll see. i think you know i'm yeah. not sure <laughs> but yeah so, so yeah. so a lot of the the stuff on the show comes from from that and then some new stuff i want to show people some new bands there's recently been which we've talked about here you know there's recently been a lot of um really good stuff in the the extreme metal underground i feel oh, yeah, the yeah. past few years you know a lot of really creative uh energy a lot of great new bands playing with back to kind of an older school sound not so clean which I think, you know, that kind of music is a lot of times is helped by a little bit messy production, like real, real stuff instead of super clean Pro Tool stuff. So, uh, so I've really been, you know, taking a new interest in the, in the extreme underground. So a lot of that stuff comes on the, on the show as well. So it's fun. Cool. Last thing, because yeah. I know you're a drummer that recorded a lot of, with a lot of artists mm -hmm. and then uh, played with a lot of people. Tell me some, some of the big names you, you, uh, Devin Townsend. Yeah, Devin Ryan Townsend. Yeah, I did. I did. I played on half an album with him, and then we ended up uh, the next year at Deconstruction. We ended up the next year. He did uh, some shows in London where he would play like an entire album, and so that was one. So then I played the whole show. Cool. And that was really cool. Very, <laughs> very crazy music. It took a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. Great guy too. And then you know I played with. I, I did a song with Danzig on his latest album. I did. Uh, I have to think I played a few shows with Satyricon from Norway. So I just, you know, I, I fill in like I boarded. I don't know. There's been a lot of there's mm -hmm. been a lot of different things, you know, but I like to I like to work with different people. For mm -hmm. me, it's 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 you always learn a lot of new things yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, always a different approach. Some people have a very specific idea what they want you to do. Other people, it's like go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it really Which is you know, good, right? Yeah. You tap, Both ways are good. Right? Both ways are like good. You tap into. Or? Yes. You tap into everything you could do. Cool. So, you know, as a, as a drummer, as a musician in general, you grow because, you know, you're, you, the more situations you're in, then you apply that to like when I'm here in Megadeth, you know, I take all that, uh, all this information and this experience and use that to be comfortable because that's another thing. As much as I was uncomfortable touring, I was also extremely uncomfortable in the studio, of course, oh, red yeah. light fever, they yeah, call yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I've learned, you know, through recording and recording and recording and working with any people. Any specific tool, any specific uh, thought? to overcome any of yeah just that. I think everybody when you go to a studio have this feeling but mm -hmm. I think anybody that is in a room with other people yeah. right or like for a, I yeah. don't know a meeting or something there's always a, it, it is a painful and stressful moment right so mm -hmm. it can be yeah, it can yeah, be right yeah. so we have do you have any yeah. anything that you think before I start recording mm -hmm. well to I avoid mean I'll tell you, so you know how they say you play your instrument, right? So I, I recently started thinking about why is it called playing, right? Mm -hmm. Playful. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I go. Yeah. I'm not there to work, you know. I, I mean, I am mm -hmm. technically, mm -hmm. but I go to like when I'm in the studio and playing a song, I want to get into the music. I want to play. I want to have fun with it. Even if sometimes I have to play specific things and it's not so much about improvising, but more about doing good performance, but I still want to get the playful feeling because I think people hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an album that's completely perfect, but there's no feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not going to bring you feeling. So, you know, I try to go to the, the playful, the playful energy because I think that's what people respond to. And at mm -hmm. the same time, it's, it makes my, you know, my position easier too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause now I'm having fun instead mm -hmm. of thinking about a job or. Yeah. So or it doesn't series. matter how many hours you are recording or no. it's, it's always, always good. That's why you're, we do the stuff here and then at night you keep yeah. playing guitar and whatever you do. Yeah, because for me it's like it's a dream, like, you know, like it's fun. It's like I yeah, get to right. do something I like and I'm passionate about and this passion never fades in mm -hmm. some way. It goes That's through crazy. some waves, you know, but it never, it's always there. I love music and, and there's always new music. You know? Yeah, right. All right. That's a good message. Yeah. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Kiko. It's been a pleasure. Guys, just 
you know, leave some comments. We can do other interviews like this. You know, send us questions and subscribe to the channel. Check. Uh, should I put a link from your? What do you want to? Yeah. Down, can, down below here, we put. What, yeah, yeah. The, we can do the Ben C stuff, I guess. If people okay. want to check out the music I make, you know. All right. Yeah. So here we go. Just gonna hit the link here. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Take Thanks. care, guys. Cheers. Bye.